Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy. And I'm Janet. Hi everyone. Today's an exciting day. We're up to 120 subscribers and we are we will be drawing for um, the prize, which we'll be showing you again. We'll review what we're giving away. Um, we're going to draw the name live. The requirement was that you were to be a subscriber and put a comment after last our last episode. So this is what we're going to do. Go ahead, draw me. Johnny. Let's see. What do we have? Aha. And Vita Sinha. Hopefully we pronounced that right. A N V I T A. <laughs> and the last name is S I N H A. So she'll have to contact us by email. Yes. And Vita, you can send us an email at quailsknittingnest at gmail.com. And let us know your address so that we can send you the package. Which will include this whole bag full, Hello Hope, full of things. If you live nearby, yeah, we can drop, just it, drop off. it off. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. This is our bulky Plymouth yarn, thick and thin, with a pattern on the inside. And then this is a DK weight superwash merino. Mm -hmm. And then a whole bunch of knickknacks. We have some fashionary uh, templates for you to draw your creations on. We have some stitch markers, some bookmarks, a little pouch that you can use for notions or anything else that you want to put in there. This is also from the Hello Hope people from uh, Handspun Hope. A little sampler of wool soap from Brooklyn Tweed. And a bar of homemade or handmade soap from Tale of the Snail, which is a lady who's local to us who sells soaps. Mm, that's nice fragrance. It smells that's light. Good. Yeah. Congratulations, Ann Vita. <laughs> Vita. <laughs> We're, we'll be waiting to hear from you. Yes. And we'll be send this out as soon as we can. That was fun to do. Now we're trying for 200. <laughs> well, we're 120. 120. <laughs> we're, we're on the way. Here. We're on the way. <laughs> yep, yep. So, Joy, what are you wearing? My goodness. I finished my Nightshades cardigan. It's The pattern is called the Renly Cardigan by Valerie Hobbs. And I'll stand up to show you. I made it shorter than what the pattern calls for. I made it like at the top hip, whereas the pattern I think has it more down at the lower hip, mid hip, low hip. It also has a lot of swing in it. And I took out most of that swing. Mm. I made it um, more form fitting. And mm, let's see. can you show the sides and the side? Oh. There's a lot of work in here. I don't know if you could see all this on the side cabling the here. Patterning. It's beautiful. There's another in the um, back. On the back. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think. Down the middle back there. And along the sleeves. Look at the sleeves. Comes up the sleeve. It's beautiful. It's all the same pattern, just in different parts of the sweater. Yeah. And then it comes up the neck edge all the way around the back and then it joins with a three needle bind off in the back. Here. I like that color. So it lays comes nicely up and uh, keeps, keeps your neck, neck warm. warm. You always say that yes. Yes. <laughs> to keep my neck warm. <laughs> so I'm very, very nice. happy with it. I love how it turned out. And would you believe I only used four skeins? And what did you get? Six? I got eight. Oh my goodness. You can make another one. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much wow. yarn left over. Yeah. This is the one with the purple in it. The black yes. with the purple. The colorway is called Talk, Talk Radio. Radio. Yeah. Yes. And it has the purple highlights, which you probably can't see on it's, camera. Yeah, but it's hard to tell. Yeah. It has purple highlights, which is why I wore a purple shirt to go with it. Very <clears> nice. <throat> wow. Well, um, you, 
You do that so quickly. I can't believe it. And mine's still sitting on the needles. It's a, it's a vest. <laughs> my sweater's a vest. Needs its sleeves. That's it. Oh my Someday. goodness. Someday. I know. I did do the sleeves top down. The pattern has you oh, doing bottom up. Oh, okay. That's why I have to do mine. <clears throat> so I did mine top down. Oh, I should have brought the book. I, I used a new top down book called oh. Top Down. I'll put I'll put it on the screen here. I forget who it's by. It's by some lady who works, I think, for Quince & Co. Oh. But it's a it's an adaptation of the standard Barbara Walker top down sleeve to supposedly give you a better fit. Oh, maybe. So I, I tried that. that and it works great, I think. Mm-hmm. Very, Very happy nice. with it. Very nice fit. Is it warm? It is. I'm getting hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both be hot by the end of this. <laughs> We're trying to wear our sweaters. It's forty seven out yeah, today. It's but cold outside. The house is warm because it's been a warm <laughs> couple, couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We had seventies. It was it's been beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Nice spring. All the spring flowers are up. The daff my daffodils and crocuses and hyacinths are all blooming. Yeah, the forsythia and the yep. magnolias are out around here, too. Oh, I haven't seen the magnolias mm -hmm. yet. Right down the street. The cherry blossoms where I work are mm -hmm. out, or mm -hmm. they're just coming out. Them. Yeah. Very nice. So tell us about your sweater. Okay. This was one of my COVID sweaters. I made about, I don't know, maybe six sweaters, maybe more, during COVID. But this is this is the Love Note by Ten Can Knits. This I'm sure most people are aware of this one. Um, and I used actually leftovers of yarn um, for making shawls. So, except for the mohair. So the mohair is Chelsea Yarns out of New Jersey, my fav one of my favorite mm -hmm. vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and well, the darker color is Chelsea also. I think it's her rose gold color. I did two-tone because I was trying to use up this yarn. So the bottom half is a different shade. I made the yoke with um, Cozy Color Works yarn, another favorite of mine from New Jersey. Um, they're at most of the knitting events that we go to. So I bought this in Allentown, the Allentown. Um, did you use the Fest. same mohair throughout? The same mohair throughout. Just changed and up then, the fingering weight yarns oh, okay. from Chelsea and Cozy Color Works. Um, Cozy Color Works, when you walk into their booth, it's just beautiful because they have it like gradients. They have it set up as gradients. The whole booth I is I made like another that. sweater that I'll have to show another time, a Hohi Locatelli. And I bought all their yarn and it went from brown to off-white, brown, peach. Oh. And, mm -hmm. and they, they have it set up in their cubicles like gradients really pretty mm. so one of my favorite sweaters very nice I'd like to make another one in solid though but I'm trying to use stash during COVID I was really that was my goal pick everything out of my stash mm -hmm. to use mm -hmm. <laughs> so the first year of COVID I was really good with that that's what I yeah. year, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know I made sweaters the first year and the second year I was making accessories and blankets and I don't know other things anyway yeah, yeah. So well, last that. time I was talking about the good old raglan, and I finished that. So this is the good old raglan by Twisted Knitwear. If you look up the pattern, you'll see I, of course, adapted it. <laughs> her, she has stripes in hers, but it, they're, it's a different striping pattern. And I used Barocco Ultra Worsted or Wool, which is the uh, first time I'd ever used that, and it's very nice. Feel it feels pretty good. It is nice. Yeah. That was from Loop, right? Yes, from Loop. Yeah, and the store closed. The store closed. We have to say that. Yeah. Last time we talked all about this store, mm -hmm. we visited Loop in um, near Westchester, and it closed. It so the one in Philadelphia is still open. It's right? still open, yes. And in Just, fact, I was there recently. When I went to see my daughter, I stopped at the Philadelphia location. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very similar to the one that mm -hmm. closed. So if you saw our little end bits from the closed loop, that's pretty much what the one that's still open looks like. Originally, so I did this top down, <clears throat> and I originally started with a ribbed collar because that's what the pattern calls for. But I did this in reverse stockinette so that you could see the color changes between the stripes because I thought that would be fun to do. 
And when I got to the bottom here, I decided to do a garter band at the bottom instead of ribbing because I thought it went better with the pattern. And then mm -hmm. I did the same thing with the sleeves. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I thought the neck didn't look right with the ribbing. So I ripped out the neck and picked up and I just, I ended up doing a roll brim. So it's just rolled over. So it's more stockinette. Plus it gives it a nice wide neck. And I even did a split in the neck. I don't know if you can see that, but I did a split. So I worked mm -hmm. the neck back and forth flat mm -hmm. in uh, reverse stockinette so it would roll over and make it plenty wide enough to fit over any baby's mm -hmm. head, I hope. Mm -hmm. So that's my... And I did put a little tag yeah. in the back. You could actually write this pattern up because you... <laughs> I redid it, yeah. <laughs> you redid the whole pattern. <laughs> I did. So, but I think I put all my modifications on my Ravelry page, so mm -hmm. you could always check it out. So that's done, and now I can give it the baby is due next month in April. Any other babies coming along? Yeah, there's another one due, I think, in August. Oh, so you'll be looking yeah, for yarn so, for that mm -hmm. now? Yep. It seems like you have one after another. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just crank out those baby sweaters. I should just always have one on the go, That's I guess. That's right. I know. I know. It's true. How about you? What do you have? Well, I was on vacation in Florida for a couple of weeks. So the only thing that I could possibly knit in the car driving down, well, riding as a passenger down 95 is socks. So I have two pairs of socks. I didn't knit it all while I was in Florida. So I'm kind of behind on things this month. But um, this another vanilla sock. I'll just hold it close. You have to see the colors of this yarn. It's stash yarn. Once again, I can't tell you whose yarn it is, but it's really, it's beautiful. I'm so happy with this. I love the shading of, and the colors. It's, it's almost Ukraine colors because it's blue and gold. Yes. Kind of dark, it's really but, pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's dark gold, but it's very I love pretty. the way they came out. I just did two by two rib on the top, the cuff, and stocking it the rest of the way. That's it. As I started knitting it, I saw how the colors were coming out, and I just thought, I just want stocking it to mm -hmm. show this yarn. Yeah. And colors, they're just so pretty. It's beautiful. And it didn't really pull or anything, nope. it just kept that nice color play. Really pretty. And then another pair of socks. These are softer. These are heavier than the other ones. But I did knit two, purl two, rib for the entire cuff. My usual, the same. Oh, wait, did I? Did I do the? No, yeah. I didn't. This is normal. I thought I did. It was on another pair of socks. Um, This is my usual gusset and heel. The knit one, slip one. Which I love. It fits my heel the best, best fitting socks. And then just stocking at the rest of the foot. And the basic decreases for the round. I guess it's called a round toe. Is it called a round toe? No, this no, is a this wedge. Is the wedge toe. wedge toe. This one has a little bit of color pulling on it. Yeah. And I always, I always go down. I don't think I ever mentioned this before. I don't know. I go down to 16 stitches. Well, 32 stitches. So I go down to 16 stitches on each side when I'm doing my Kitchener on each needle. Um, so that's 32 total. A lot of patterns call for fewer stitches, but I don't like when the toe is too narrow. gets more pointed yeah. because my toes don't aren't shaped that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to look at the shape of your foot yeah, yeah. because, you know, if it's going in this way, you know there's more stress, especially on the big toe, mm -hmm. pressing on your shoe. So I've always found it's better just to go down to 32 stitches, 16 on each side. And I do the 12 on you each side. You do 12? Yeah. 24. So it just depends. Look at your foot. Custom fit socks. That's, that's, what, right. that's what this pattern is. This is still Joy's basic pattern, the one I use every single time. And I just change up the cuffs, the stitch patterns. That's all I have. Oh, well, that's not all I have. That's right. We have this. So I did the, the next Knitter's Day Out square. This is square six, so mm -hmm. we're, now, we're now halfway done. I can't mm -hmm. believe it already. This one looks like this. And this one is knit from the center out. 
when I first saw it, I thought it was knit from the outside in, but then when I got started on the pattern, I realized it was center out. And let me tell you, getting started on this was really kind of rough. I was wondering when I read the directions. Yeah, I, I mean, wondering. I've I've done the pinhole cast on before, and that wasn't the major mm -hmm. concern. But the increases that she has going out from it, the stitches that are on the diagonal, these are slip stitches. So it's... When you do the increase, it's make one, slip one, make one. So you have this strand mm. of yarn that's going from one stitch to two stitches, plus you're slipping the stitch. So there's so much mm. stress on that strand when you're doing the increases on, on the diagonal ones that I found it to be very tricky, even after I got past the... The, the initial part was the hardest, and then even past there, it got a little bit awkward. So I ended up changing my increases because I was having a lot of trouble with it. Plus, I was using this woolly, oily yarn, which is kind of mm -hmm. thick, and it's also a little hard slipping along the needles. So it wasn't the most pliable for making that those kind of increases on. So I'd, I had a bit of trouble with it. Anyway... I got through it and it's fine and I left all four edges live mm -hmm. so that I can sew them all together without you know a bound off seam. Were there any comments on Ravelry about this square? I wonder how many people actually did it. I only saw two and nobody else really talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, no. So there's, that's that. That's pretty. I did want to do that one, but I didn't <laughs> because I couldn't. <laughs> because I'm doing my afghan in strips, connecting one block to the next. I couldn't start from the middle out, and I wanted, yeah. wanted to continue doing this. So I came up with this idea. I thought, okay, well, I have to come up with this, my own stitch pattern. So what I did was, I'll Here, show you I'll this, this first. I looked at, I thought, the one block that we did, block two, was a Guernsey Gansey sampler. And it included several different stitch patterns. So I don't know if you could see. I drew a block around the one part of the chart. And it's actually a tree. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I just isolated that part of the chart and repeated it through the block, and I'm really happy with it. Yeah, it looks great. It kind of matches, you know. So, so yeah, if fine. that happens again, I decided I might take another <laughs> one of these <laughs> yeah, from the Guernsey idea. block. Yeah. Because it's already set up for 60 stitches mm -hmm. and, right. you know, for the way you're supposed to do your block. That's right. So yeah. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it looks Ooh, great. You can really see the trees on the yeah, camera. Yeah, it's standing so, out really well. It's not blocked yet, obviously. but mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So your first block, you didn't follow. Right. And I did. And your second block, you did. I didn't. So we're alternating. <laughs> it, was, it was funny, though. Reading, I read the pattern before I started, and I sat down to do it. And as soon as I started the cast down, I thought, wait, how? I can't do this. How can I do this? <laughs> so that's what I did. There you go. So I'm waiting for the next square. My next square will be ivory. That'll be out. That should be out soon. Although this last one came out over a week late. Oh, that's right. So, but I before it was the, like the 25th. Yeah, around the 25th. It? So I was wondering. So it should be coming soon. Should be. So that's that. We'll like see. Joy said, we're half finished with it. So. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any other FOs? I do. Uh, oh, okay. Show us. No, not FO. No, okay. no, no, no. All right. No, no, no. Well, I have an that's acquisition it. I want to share. Oh, you have an acquisition. So last. Uh, not the last podcast, but the last video that I uploaded was from our Knitter's Day Out, which we do every January mm -hmm. here in Pottstown. And I did buy some yarn from one of the vendors. This is from Mountain Laurel Yarn. I got three colors. Mm -hmm. Feels nice. This is her Shetland DK. And she hand dyes her own yarn and 
I think most of them are natural dyes. She might do some Kool-Aid dyes too, oh. but these are natural dyes. So this is the natural color. This is indigo. And then this is matter. So I ended up with a very patriotic trio mm -hmm. here. Now I have to figure out what to do with it. <laughs> but it feels nice. Yeah, it does. You could feel like the lamb, the oil in it, the lamb, and whatever. I could feel it. It's and nice. it doesn't. I I guess I always think in my head that Shetland yarn should be really rustic feeling, but mm -hmm. this it's not. It's not really. It's soft. I've I've definitely used more rustic -y yarn than this mm -hmm. for sure. Yes, you have like that square. Yeah, <laughs> the Afghan square. Yeah, this is this is not what you would call soft. <laughs> you don't want to um, cozy up in this with no. in your in your bare skin around your neck. No. <laughs> so that's what I have, and I'm looking forward to doing something with it. Not sure what, mm -hmm. but yep. Do you have any? New stuff today? The, the only acquisition I have is part of my whip. Oh, yeah. Tell okay. us about it. So, <laughs> this is Bernay Baby Blanket. Yarn Inspiration. Super bulky. And it's like <laughs> a chenille. It's 100% polyester. And it's, let's see, like I said, it's super bulky. It's machine wash and dry. And I was just telling Joy, this was actually the first time I went into Michael's in, in years. And we have a brand new Michael's mm -hmm. our house. First yeah. time. Every yarn that I looked at said machine wash, lay flat. So this is for baby blanket. And all that other yarn that they're selling, they recommend for baby blankets. And it's all machine wash, lay flat. This is the only one I could find that said Machine wash and dry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I love the colors. They're perfect. I'm making them for my great nephew, Bryson. And his room is, theme is safari. So this worked out well. They had hundreds of these in this color. I don't know what it was, but they had hundreds. <laughs> oh, so I bought, I bought 10. <laughs> and they were on sale. So that was good. So I'm making... A big blanket for him. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to see this pattern so far, but I just made it up. I have a garter stitch border and edges. I don't know if you could see. I just started, and it's checkerboard. I'm just doing knit 10, purl 10, knit 10, purl 10 across for 10 rows and then reverse it, purl 10, knit 10. So they're going to be blocks. Show how wide it is. It's going to be <laughs> 40 some inches wide. Maybe 50. It's really wide. And I'm just going to use the 10 balls and make it as big as I can. So I'll have a big blanket. It'll cover whatever. <laughs> but it'll last him until he's an adult. <laughs> it's been such a long time since I used large needles. So these are size 11s. And um, I don't know. My hands seem to hurt a little bit if I'm oh. knitting too much because yeah. the yarn is so thick. And the needles are big, and it seems like you have you really have to work a little harder with this compared to the little needles for socks or the fingering weight, whatever, or anything else other than super bulky. But I'll do a little bit at a time. Yeah, yeah. And it's something you don't have to think about either. When you're watching. You TV. don't have a due date for it. No. Mm -mm. Well, the other blanket, our block blanket, is for him too, and I already told my niece that. They won't get it until after September of this year. So well, summer's coming. Because we do one he, block a month, yeah. Yeah. So this will probably be for Christmas too, or something. I'll probably save it for Christmas. This bulky one. But anyway, what are you what are you working on? I don't even know what you're working on. I don't have anything. What is that? Well, I am working on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Another Kiki Mariko rug. Oh, wow. I made one last February. Oh, it's so heavy. Yeah. Made one last February, and I love it. 
And even at the time, I was like, oh, I need to make another one because I have the one that I made is along the side of my bed. And now I want another one to go along the foot of my bed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here you can see that where the steak is, it's yeah, pretty it's, obvious, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's double worsted? Yes. Double mm -hmm. stranded worsted weight yarn. The pattern is called Kiki Mariko and it's by Kay Gardner and Ann Shane. They're from oh. Modern Daily Knitting. Right. Last year they did the knit along. Mm -hmm. It was Bang Out a Rug last February. And that's when I did my original. So, uh, since I finished this sweater, now I let myself make the rug and I, you can kind of see there's I'm up to my third repeat so the pink there's one pink two pink three pink so you're you're doing a regular pattern it's not just yeah. random right okay. it's eight colors and I'm repeating them so I've just I'm just finishing my third repeat and I think I'm going to need two more repeats mm -hmm. and I may I have enough yarn of these but there are a couple that I might run out of like I might run out of the yellow mm -hmm. so I'll have to do a little more stash diving but let me tell you what I've done a good a job we weeding down my worsted weight stash. I bet you did and I'm slowly replacing it with this uh double knitting oh yeah <laughs> the DK this weight. is lamb's pride isn't it yep mm -hmm. it is that was a full skein when I started. What's this? That's Cascade. It's pretty. Oh, yes. It does look like Cascade. Oh. Yep. Two basics. Yep. Yep. And I have the purple is Cascade. The orangey color is Patton's. And this blue, you might recognize, that is the Patton's Rustic that you gave mm -hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And the pink is more Lamb's Pride. And the green is that old, um, oh, I'm getting, the rustic wool is <laughs> all over your sweater. <laughs> all over my sweater. sweater. Uh, I made a, a green Greta sweater out of this. This is an old yarn called Pattern Iron, which I don't think you can even get anymore. I don't know. You, most people use it for rugs. Which is perfect, because mm -hmm. I'm making a rug out of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I've only been working less than a week on this, so... <laughs> I didn't even know you started it. My goodness. And this is on size 13s, oh. but because it's such a loose gauge, this, for me, this is being really easy knitting. It's... Because mm -hmm. you want it to be loose so that it felt swell, mm -hmm. and I'm just finding it very easy, and it's very fast, because it's like, I don't know three stitches to the inch or something ridiculous you know i always love knitting with these two yarns when we were making the felted bags mm -hmm. with the slams pride i loved knitting with that yarn and it was always double strand yeah for the felted bags very heavy i yeah. know nice yarns so that's my work in progress that's all i have that's all i have Hey, <laughs> we have a short one today. I think so. So tell us what you're making. Um, a lot of the podcasts are talking about, they're doing polls, like The Knitting Place, um, which is a yarn shop in New York. She's uh, she's live every Monday night. Um, she wants to know, because she makes kits for her shop, what's everybody knitting? Summer tees, which they're doing, nice little cotton sweaters, or shawls. Or socks, I think it is. Okay. So quite a few of them are doing polls now to see. So I'm curious to see what the results are. Are you going to make a summer sweater? Probably not. No, nah, I'm not either. I don't seem to wear them. Yeah. Know. Yeah. And some, oh, some podcasts, like Needles at the Ready, um, Ray and Kevin, two guys that we saw at Rhinebeck, they're working on their Rhinebeck sweaters. Oh, already. well, that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. Yeah. <laughs> Get a leg up on it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Ray is making a very rustic one. He's using Let Lopey, which is very rustic. Yeah. And, um, of course, he said, I hope I'll be able to wear it because Rhinebeck is mm -hmm. early again. It's like the 16th or something, October 16th. So um, Kevin told him, well, take your shorts. Again. Wear your shorts. With it. Yeah. <laughs> he can't wear a heavy sweater like that. It's too hot. But... Anyway, right. what are you making? Yeah. Tell us. Tell us We're what curious. you're making. 
in the comments. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Happy spring. And if you have not have subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. And then you'll know whenever we have a new episode come up. You'll see the little dot come up mm -hmm. saying, there's a new episode. Since we're kind of random. <laughs> we don't have a regular schedule. I'm trying to get our schedules together. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should be better now, though, I think. Anyway, happy spring. Happy knitting. Yes. Enjoy. Take care of yourselves. Seems like we're pretty much mask free now, although I don't, I don't want to say too much about that, but take care. Bye-bye.